Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. I have dozens of bonus videos posted that will help you in these areas and also will help you develop stronger coping skills. In each of the program notes, there's a link where you can request a free digital book, Understanding Your Dreams, where you can find my other media and also where you can find my books on Amazon. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Now here's today's episode. Welcome to this week's episode of Life Without Baggage. Today, I'm going to be talking about greater power to overcome. Whatever it is you're trying to overcome, there are things that we're challenged with in our daily lives. Sometimes, you know, things catch up to us that maybe we have to make some corrections, but other times things occur or things pile on that we really couldn't have done much about, and we need God's power to help us overcome. I would ask that if you're enjoying these principles that I've been sharing, would you consider picking up one of my books on Amazon? If you've been listening to my podcast, you know I have two devotional books, one called Sheep Hear His Voice and one called Insights into Faith, a workbook also called Life Without Baggage that will help you find greater emotional freedom and peace, a Bible study, and two books that will help you with personal coping and understanding distortions and understanding yourself. So consider picking up one of those for yourself or a friend. So let's get into today's episode. So the different kinds of things that we might need help with are maybe there's a sin that we're trying to do better with. There are things I have to watch that come out of my mouth. I'm Italian. I have to watch that. And the Lord has been working on me quite a bit about that being careful what comes out of my mouth. And also, of course, I have to work on my heart attitude when something bad is about to leave my lips. So, um, hey, I have to practice these things just like you do. So I, I wanna share some thoughts, some principles to help you have the courage and the power and the confidence that the Lord can help you overcome whatever it is you're wrestling with depression, anxiety, trauma, relational challenges, disappointment. All of these things are not too big for God. So I, I want to remind you that we're told in the scriptures that Jesus is the lion, the lion of Judah, but he's also the lamb of God. So when you need courage, when you need to be able to speak up, he is the Lion of Judah, and if you've asked him to be your Savior, he indwells you, and you can draw on his power flowing through you through the Holy Spirit. And as the Lamb of God, he gives us the comfort, the encouragement, the peace that we need when we want to hold on to our sanity in the midst of chaos. And so I, I just want to remind you that Jesus is the lion and he is the lamb. And so you can draw on him, draw closer to him, draw from the Holy Spirit for what you need. So I'm going to share some scriptures with you that have been very powerful for me when I've been going through different things that really stretched me beyond Beyond the max, do you know how that is sometimes? So first I'm going to read from the Passion Translation. And this is from the book of 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. The reason the Son of God was revealed was to undo and destroy the works of the devil. So the Son of God, Jesus, came. 
He came to earth. He made himself manifest, real. He took on flesh and blood. And by dying on the cross and then physically resurrecting, he broke the power of sin and death over us. Now, we still have to draw on his power for us, but it's available now. It's like if you have money in the bank, you still have to go get it <laughs> when you need it and appropriate it, I think is how the scripture would say it. I also want to read Again, I'm going to read from the Passion Translation, again, from the book of 1 John. These are epistles as opposed to there's a gospel of John, but this is, there are three epistles that John wrote. He's very gentle. He's very like fatherly. So if you're looking for a scripture to read, if you're not familiar with the book of 1 John, that's a good place to go. I'm going to read a few verses from the book of 1 John. And again, I'm in chapter 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Messiah is God's spiritual child and has been fathered by God himself. This verse jumped out at me when I first became a Christian. True love for God means obeying his commands, and his commands don't weigh us down as heavy burdens. You see, every child of God overcomes the world. For our faith is the victorious power that triumphs over the world. So who are the world conquerors defeating its power? Those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. So I was raised in a uh, religious environment where there were lots of rules, lots of rules. And those rules felt burdensome. They felt like a lot of pressure. It was hard to keep up with them. A lot of people didn't bother. And when I came to know the Lord, when I received Jesus as my Savior and started reading the Bible, a lot of what I talk about is how much I have learned about grace, that we don't earn the power to overcome. We draw it from Jesus. And it's not burdensome because he gives us the power. If we had to grit our teeth and make these changes out of our own inner strength, I mean, there are times you can do that, but there's other things that it's just like, this is too big. And that's when it's important to know how to draw on those deeper levels in Jesus Christ, which is what this series is on. And then as we learn how to draw from him, as we understand he wants to give us the power and the peace and the confidence to overcome, we become more fully alive. You hear me talk about this. Uh, the gospel of John chapter 10, verse 10 says, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. That's Jesus. So and there's also a similar verse that talks about in Colossians 2:10. I'm going to I'm going to read Colossians chapter 2 verses 9 and 10 from the passion. For he, Jesus, is the complete fullness of deity living in human form. He took on a body so he could die for our sins. And our own completeness is now found in him. We are completely filled with God as Christ's fullness overflows within us. He is the head of every kingdom and authority in the universe. So the power isn't coming from us as we access our faith, our connection to Jesus Christ. His power can flow through us and his power makes us fully alive. You've heard me talk about being fully alive body, soul, and spirit. And as we unload baggage, as we learn how to lean into the Lord, deeper and deeper levels of peace, deeper and deeper reservoirs of strength, then we become more fully alive. So what are the steps to overcoming? I'm, I'm kind of simplifying this. But number one, you want to make sure that you've received Jesus. John 1.12 says, but to all who receive him, who believe in his name, to them he gives the power to become children of God. 
And when I first came to know the Lord, my brother shared with me from the book of 1 John chapter 5, he who has the son has the life. He who does not have the son of God does not have the life. I write this to you so that you may know that you have eternal life. I thought you just had to try to do your best and then keep your fingers crossed that you don't go to hell. But God wants you to know that if you are in Jesus Christ, you are assured that you will belong with him in heaven and you are his, you become his child. So the next step, this is another R, is to release yourself in others. What do I mean by that? Uh, I've talked about judgments against yourself, judgments against other people. You could cons consider it like resentments. So we're not supposed to trust everyone, but we want to be releasing ourselves from things that we feel guilty about, that we've sinned. If you take it to the Lord, you're forgiven. And we don't want to carry resentments against other people. It's bad for us. It can make you physically ill. It just ruins. It gives people power that they shouldn't have. And so in my workbook, Life Without Baggage, there's a number of exercises to help you release different things. So you want to forgive other people and release them. Again, that doesn't mean trust them, but you don't want to carry that baggage. Our goal is life without baggage, isn't it? And then what happens as we learn to overcome, the Lord renews our identity. He renews our dignity and he renews our destiny. I have a short video about that. So I'm going to explain that briefly. So renewing our identity Many times we're defined by what our family says we are, what our culture says we are, what uh, disappointments happen. And in any given time and culture, there are certain things that are valued and other characteristics that are not. So we don't want to be defined by what we've been through or the negative things other people say about us. We become a new creation in Jesus Christ. He gives us a brand new identity. If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. The old has passed away. The new has come. It's the picture of a metamorphosis from the caterpillar to the butterfly. So don't live like a caterpillar. Learn how to be the butterfly. You are empowered to do that. And God sees you differently than you see yourself. The next renewed dignity. There are things that happen to us. Rejection, failure. We get fr I get frustrated with myself. But the Lord honors us. Even if you are disrespected, if you are in age or your, your gender or your race, if you are devalued, the Lord still gives you dignity. We see this many times in the Gospels where at that time, women were not valued at all. And Jesus still made connections and gave opportunities for the women to be part of the ministry. If you've read the book of John chapter four, the woman at the well was shocked that Jesus was talking to her because that was something that just didn't happen in that culture. And especially she seemed to have been sort of a wild woman. So definitely a man who wasn't looking for trouble would not have talked to her. But Jesus engaged her in conversation and changed her life. The next way that we overcome is we are renewed in our destiny. Before I knew the Lord, I had sort of an idea of what I wanted to do with my life. And as things happened, I changed what I was going to do. And I don't know if it was a detour or whether it was a step on the road that the Lord used, but he began to change my thinking about what I was going to do with my life. And eventually, 
I went back to school, even though I really never intended to go back to school. And obviously you can see that uh, the Lord gave me the determination to finish a doctorate and then to be involved as my profession in helping other people overcome. What God has for us oftentimes is bigger than what we would have chosen for ourselves and sometimes different, but I can't imagine doing anything else. So I put my destiny in his hands and he will renew your destiny. And sometimes there's the season changes in your life and it's time for a new blueprint and he can continue to take you from glory to glory and from strength to strength. So to wind up, I'm going to pray for us. Lord, I pray that you would open the eyes of the person who is listening to know that you want them to succeed, that you desire for them to overcome, whether it's something that's happening now or something that they've been through that still kind of clings to them. I ask you to guide them and break every yoke of bondage over this person so that they can be fully alive. In Jesus' name, we declare these things. Amen. This is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. Thanks for listening. And if this helped you, share it with a friend. Talk to you next time.